Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Celtic Park. Uh, last Monday, as you all know, we announced that we're delighted to announce that Brendan was returning as the first team manager. Um, he was the outstanding candidate. Clearly, he knows Celtic. He knows how we operate. He knows how we work, and he's got an outstanding track record. Uh, the last time he was here, so he's um, he knows the back room. He knows the executive. So. He, he is an ideal candidate, he was the outstanding candidate, and we were delighted to have him here today. We're delighted when he said yes and accepted the job. So thank you guys, and I'll open for questions now. Brendan, welcome back. Nice thank you very much. You. Thank uh, you. How does it feel to be sat here a second time to be unveiled as the Celtic manager? Well, I'm very privileged and honoured to, um, to be asked to come back. Uh, my whole plan was to, to have a year out and uh, and reset again, but um, but once I spoke to the you know, the guys at the club and um, and looked a little bit more deep into you know where the club was at, then um, it, it was then pretty straightforward. You know the club's in a fantastic place, um, and uh, it made me really excited to to come back. And also, it wasn't a nostalgic move, but I had an amazing time here when I was here. But I'm here to win going forward and uh, and I really look forward to, to hopefully achieving that. When you left the club last time, you said you'd maybe taken the club as far as you could have at that moment. Mm. What has changed in the intervening period? What do you think you can do more now and what made you mm. think you can do perhaps more now? Yeah, listen, I think the first and foremost, your bread and butter is always Scotland. So you have to ensure that you're, you, you have dominance whilst you're here. But what I would like to think that we can do something in Europe and that means you know it's, it's well documented over many years you know when the club hasn't qualified or gone through uh, a great record in terms of European football so and even though that is a challenge with the resources that other clubs will have in terms of European football it's a great challenge for us you know get Champions League football this season and look to to have European football after Christmas and uh, and like I say uh, that uh, that's a great challenge for us all. And when I look at the from within the club, uh, whenever I'd spoken to Michael, and uh, when, when he came out to to present the infrastructure at the club, uh, there was a lot of things in place that we'd spoken about uh, when I was here the first time. There was a brilliant recruitment team in in place. I look at Mark and the work that he's done since he's been here and setting up, and it's set up perfectly for a club like. Uh, like Celtic to work in the markets that they uh, that they need to be working in, and you can see with the players that's been brought in through his recruitment team, and and uh, and that for me is um, is very important. And and I come to a club for one of the very few times in my career where it has uh, an upward feel to it. You know, a lot of the the jobs that I've gone into, the, the clubs have maybe been suffering or the teams have been suffering, and I've come in to um, to pick it up. Here I come in. With a great foundation, on the on the back of the great work that Andrew's done here over the last couple of years, and uh, and look to continue with that. Have you spoken to Andrew at all about the group you're inheriting and what he found here during his time? No, no. I've exchanged messages with him. I've I've spoken depth to to John Kennedy, who's obviously been a, a pivotal uh, <coughs> person here at the club, and who was and who will be my assistant whilst I'm here. So, uh, yeah, I've spoken at length. I've obviously watched Celtic as well. The football philosophy is, is not uh, too different in terms of how um, how we would work and, and how a Celtic manager is, is perceived uh, to work with his team. You know, it's, it's an attacking club where you have to not just win, but you have to win stylistically in a certain way. And 
and Angie's obviously done that, and, and hopefully my period before we were able to do that. So, uh, so it's a continuation of that, and looking to continue to build on that. Uh, by and large, the, the reaction to your return to the team very positive from the mm. fan base. They seem keen to have you back and remember what you did first time out. Yeah. There, of course, was that anger amongst some yeah. when you departed. I just wonder how difficult at the time that was to see some of the things that were said, the anger that was there towards you, and also if it put you off at all coming back. No, listen, I, I un would understand how supporters would, would feel. And, and listen, I, I also know that when I was here, maybe the, the first time when we were doing really well, I will always will have had critics. So, um, But it was an emotional time. The, the club was going for 10 in a row and, and there was a lot of emotion around. Um, it was something that, uh, like you said, that I, I never get too emotional with words. I'm, I'm hoping that in my time here, I can uh, have that impact that I had in my first time. I think the expectations are greater. I think the pressure is greater because of what we did the first time and probably how I left. But it's but that was what I wanted. That's why I'm here. I'm here to win, to take on that expectation and pressure because it's a club that uh, that wants to be winning. And for me, hopefully the, the, the people that I've had lots of support for, from you know, when I left and I'm now coming back, I really thank them for that, for the people that maybe don't want me here. Hopefully I can uh, prove to them uh, with the football that we play and, and the success that we can have, hopefully I can uh, shift their opinions. I was going to say, is that the hope for you now, that you'll be able to change the opinions of those last few who remain unconvinced? You'll be able to win them back around, because previously obviously you had a, a fabulous relationship with the fan base. Yeah, and, and, I, and I hope that I can still have I think it's just um, it's natural when I left it, w it was a sad moment and um, I certainly don't regret it but what I do regret is the hurt that it caused people and it's the very reason I'm sat here today you know as a Celtic supporter I, I understood what uh, what it meant and uh, and probably even more so when I, when I left so that was my regret that I hurt people who were Celtic supporters and and uh, it, was, it was a big part of coming back. Final question from myself before I hand the, the floor over to the rest of the guys. Perhaps it's, I don't know who this goes to because it's sort of past and present. Michael <laughs> Peters, can you give us an idea of perhaps the difference in resource that Brendan will get to work with this time round to when he came in first time round? Because obviously there's an ambition to maybe make a better dent in Europe again, whichever gentleman would like to take yeah. it. Sure, I, mean, I think from our perspective, the strategy has always been clear. Um, that's to be a world-class football club in whatever we do. As Brendan mentioned, that's we want to dominate in Scotland. We want to compete in the Champions League, and that has been clearly stated for many, many years. So there's no change in that regard. What we have always done over many years is to to con continuously improve as a football club, to invest. We've got a sustainable model, a self-financing model. So we invest when we can um, for today tomorrow and the long term. So there's no significant change there. And um, we all want the same thing, which is to win. Brendan, <coughs> you spoke there of, of the emotions <coughs> of the, the cl this club holds to you. I just wondered, when you left at that time, what effect, you know, that emotion, does that still have? <coughs> you still hold that emotion over the time when you when you left? Yeah, listen, it was it was a sad time because of the the relationships that I built up here with the with the players, with the supporters, with the board, um, so it wasn't an easy decision, of course. Um, but to go away and and then be able to come back again, I think it, despite probably what I've read at times and what I hear, you know, life's about relationships, and I wouldn't be sat here today if I didn't have the relationship with the guys around the table. And with the other members of the board, uh, it just it just wouldn't happen. So um, I'm I'm clearly ambitious, but I'm very ambitious for Celtic to be the best that we can be. I think as as I come back to the landscape and understand it much better now, in terms of where we function. And but my ambition is is for Celtic to be the best. And um, and and when I left, no matter the the criticism that I had, the, the club was always was close to me and. Um, and like I said, it's a real privilege and honour to be invited back again. To those who may have an apprehension, what would be your message to those individuals directly? Listen, hopefully in time, I can give you the feeling that I gave you when I was here the first time. And I don't expect anything. 
and if I get the support, uh, which has been amazing for me and the reaction since I came back, then uh, then that's great for those who doubt. I've had it all my career, so I will continue to uh, to work hard and hopefully produce a team that plays and and plays development that uh, hopefully they can enjoy and and it's just going to be something that will take time, I'm sure. You mentioned you're taking over that privileged positions of the the treble winners. How do you assess the squad that you inherit and? What's your plans in terms of strengthening this summer? Listen, I think it's it's a good time to strengthen. Whenever you uh, whenever you've done ever so well, and like you say, a team coming off the back of a treble. I've been in that position before, and uh, we were able to do another treble. So I understand the feeling now over the course of a summer what it is you need at this period, uh, and that will be a bit of strengthening. But it's also I'm really excited to work with the players here because it's a young squad. And uh, and there's still, you know, a lot of growth within that. So, um, but I'm really looking forward to to getting to see them over the course of pre-season. There's only a few players that were here from when I was here, uh, so it's an exciting squad, and we can add to that. That uh, it's now a really good time to do that when you're winning. You've already mentioned Europe previously. What does success look like for you? What do you envisage success looking like for yourself and for Celtic on a on a European stage? <coughs> well, listen. We, we we all know the challenges of, of the Champions League, and and of course it's it's where you can get through. If you can get through into the knockout stages, then of course that is uh, that's a big step for for a Scottish team. Um, but you arrive into Europe. There, there's competitions now where you can, uh, with that little bit of luck and uh, and the quality that you can have, it can allow you to. Uh, uh, to go a long way, so um, so for us, I think it's it's getting through a qualification phase, which is really really important, and uh, and like I said, you you see where that can take you, but um, but Europe is something that it's such a challenge, uh, but uh, but for us it's a great challenge, and that's something that we'll uh, look to embrace. How much have you evolved or changed as a manager since you were last year? And well, can we expect to see a slightly different Celtic team to what we saw four and a half years ago? Well, it, yeah, well, I think in terms of how we play, my, my teams are always they always play uh, with an attacking philosophy. It's always uh, aggressive, and it's always a team set out to win, but always with a, a tactical discipline. So, um, so that has never changed. When my teams are at their best, that's that's what they do. So, uh, so for me. I'm a better manager than when I sat here seven years ago when I first came and certainly uh, from when I left four years ago. The experience is good and bad, always help you. And uh, and that was the beauty of coming back to here. It's uh, it's an amazing club and, and I can come back with my experience and hopefully help the club keep move forward. Do you plan a lot of recruitment over the next few months or will it just be one or two just to enhance the squad? Yeah, no, really. I think it's just about getting quality. and. Um, my, my, my conversations with Mark and the recruitment team, they've got a great handle on, on where it's and speaking to Michael, everything is under control in terms of contractually and, but like I say, I'm always to improve is, is when you're doing well and this would be a nice, this is a nice possibility for us to, uh, to improve the squad, but it's not, it's not lots of numbers. I think Ange, when he came in, he had a massive rebuilding job and done a brilliant job at that. And over the last couple of years, himself and the club, they've built a really, really good squad. So, um, so it's a case of continually developing that squad and then adding quality where we can. You guys have spoken a lot about Europe, but how much are you looking forward to just the bread and butter of being back in Scottish football, battling for the title? Yeah, yeah, battling with the media. That's always good fun. <laughs> but, uh, but now, listen, I, I have to say, Scotland brought me a lot of happiness on and off the pitch. Uh, when I was here, obviously the joy of working here at Celtic was amazing and, and how successful we were. Um, and of course off the pitch, um, I had a lot of respect for, for the city and for the, the country as a whole. And uh, hence why whenever we were coming back and thinking about coming back, it wasn't just the, um, the football side. The last moments when we were here was, was tough and off the field. It still didn't change for us the, the good feeling that we had 
here than we hear at Celtic. So I'm delighted to be here from a professional perspective and taking on the uh, the other teams uh, and also from a, a family perspective. They'll find a great happiness here. Do you see yourself being here for the long haul, for several years? Well, hopefully. Listen, I've signed for three years and I'll guarantee you I'll be here for three years unless I... Uh, I get emptied before that, <laughs> as, as they say up here. But uh, but yeah, that that will that that will be the plan, and um, and like I say, then we can we, we can look at it from there. Obviously, there's always the focus on the Celtic Rangers rivalry. You've worked with Michael before in the past. What kind of challenge are you expecting from going forward? And do you think that they'll be stronger than they were in your first spell? Well, I think when you all you can do in, is you know when you're. Uh, when your manager is, is beat the opposition that's in front of you, you know I think when I arrived seven years ago, Rangers were getting promoted. They'd just beaten Celtic, and there was a, a big uh, feeling that they could go on and win the league. Now, obviously, over the the the, the next numbers of years, we were able to um, focus on ourselves and play the football that we wanted to play, and uh, and that allowed us to win trophies and, and have success. And it'll be exactly the same here. Michael is a uh, is a coach that I knew from back in the Chelsea days, and then uh, came to Liverpool when I was manager there. So I've known him over a period of time, and he's an excellent coach. Um, but my focus will purely be on on Celtic, improving us as a team, and that will be my my thought process uh, every minute of the day. There's a lot of talk over John Kennedy uh, as your assistant, a, mm. a wanted man. It seems just how crucial was it that, that you keep him by your side and obviously a man who knows this club better than most. Yeah, yeah, it was very important. I had spoken to Michael on that when we had met. I think that uh, over the of my career I've worked, you know, I've always come into clubs. Some have come in on my own, some have come in with, uh, with staff. Uh, but I've always felt that coming back to here that it was really going to be really important uh, for John to be here because... Uh, of, uh, he knows how I work. He knows uh, the rhythm of my days and, and how how can work. He, he's steeped in, in Celtic. Um, he's an incredible worker. He's a great football man. He's the respect of the players. He's respect for all the staff. So for me to be able to to have him here was important. So when I spoke to John and and looked to convince him to to stay, I was really pleased and happy that uh, that he wanted to. So. Um, now he's, he's a great guy, great football man. Uh, we worked really well <coughs> together the last time we were here, and uh, and hopefully it can be the same this time. Can I just ask <coughs> about the recruitment of Brendan? From the point you realised Dan would perhaps depart to bring him <coughs> in, the sort of time scale, the process, and how quickly you, you realised that Brendan would be the man you would prefer to, to have at the helm. Yeah, sure. So Chris McKay and I went for lunch in Mallorca. That was the the starting point. That was. Um, Perhaps the worst kept secret in Scottish football. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, perhaps uh, Chris has some bread on beach ball gave us away in the airport. That might have been it. But no, I think you always have to be ready for change in football. And when Ange left, um, you know, we, we knew we had to replace him with a, a manager of top top quality. And in Brendan, we know we've got that. Uh, we've, as many mentioned, we've met, we've invested in the squad over the last few years. We've got a very young, uh, hungry squad. So we profiled managers that, through the process, could take us on, and Brendan was a standout candidate. So that was our priority, was to bring Brendan back to Celtic, and we're delighted to do so. And just on the contract, Brendan mentioned it then, it's, it's a three-year deal. He says he's there for the duration of it, unless you decide otherwise. Yeah. Was that a conscious decision to, to give a longer, definitive period of time? Because it, it's not been the, the regular way of doing the contract. So. Sure. I mean, I, again, when Chris and I met with Brendan, it was clear that there was a mutual excitement about what we're going to go on, what, 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 sorry, what we could go on to do. And this is a mutual statement of our commitment to that. So we're, that was an important part of it, yeah. Brendan, your message to the Celtic fans when you were appointed was, let's get to work. Do you have one now that you're sitting here in the stadium? No, let's not, it's just a thank you for for the, su the support that I've had. Um, this is a club that allows you to dream. It's an amazing football club with a, a history so rich and, and I'm hoping that us together we can we can add to that and it is going to be it has to be unified it has to be together and uh, and like we were the first time 
let's see if we can create those memories again and, and they were special memories and uh, and as I said from this day forward we uh, we, we stay together thank you very much thank you okay thank you 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 thank you